Hello, welcome everyone to another episode of Minecrab. Today we've updated the classic 0.0.18a underscore 02. This version is in the multiplayer test phase of classic, so more of the changes exist on the server side than in single player. For single player, the only changes are with characters. The starting curly brace now has the proper width, and so it won't make a line when we put a lot of them in a row anymore. And then the eye character has a top and bottom to make it look different than the lowercase l. Next up, I want to showcase some bugs that exist in this version. The first is a building bug. So if I get the angle just right, you can see I'm placing a block to the side of this block that I'm actually selecting. Instead of placing on the front face, at this angle, with the player in the way, I can actually place to the side. This can work up here as well, if I get the angle right. I'm able to place through this block. And this is directional, so I actually can't do that same bug facing this direction. I can only do it in this direction. If I go to these transparent blocks using this bug, I can even get a preview on transparent blocks. So right now it's flashing between the leaves and the planks that I'm trying to place. It's like the block replacement bug I showed in an earlier episode, but it doesn't actually allow me to place the block here. It stops me but it does put the preview there, so whatever block I'm trying to place will show up. And this even works for saplings as well. So just there, if you get the angle right, flashing inside the sapling. Transparent blocks even have it, so if you get the angle right, you can just go straight into them by themselves. This is almost like its own separate bug. So you can get the preview here, but you still can't place the blocks inside the transparent blocks here. Next up is a bug with the camera. If I go underneath a block on the edge and look straight down, then begin jumping, I can see the block that's above me in the bottom of the screen right now, just briefly every jump at the height of my jump. And if I break this block that's above me, so we have a block that's two blocks above me, and I start jumping, we can still see the face of the block when I'm at the height of my jump. Now we can combine the two bugs I found. If I look straight down, go into build mode, start spamming jumping and left click, I can actually place blocks above me to the side. This is a pretty cool bug. It allows you to place in an area you're not looking at all. So a small number of changes again. Don't worry, next episode we'll have more added. We're going to switch straight over to the server to see the changes there. We're now on Classic Server 1.4 and we've got more exciting character changes. The backslash, pike, at symbol, and dollar sign can now be put in chat, but these still can't be put into level names. Also, internally, we've got a server.log file added to the server folder. But server.log doesn't actually work in this version. It isn't fixed until the next server version we have archived 1.6. Also, the readme has new text added for the version. However, the biggest addition was with skins. But with one player, we can't really see them right now, because we're stuck in first person with no hand visible. But we can check them out in a new world real quick. Here's my skin in a different world. This is the first time you all have been able to see it. And you can see my arms are stuck off to the side. And they also have Z fighting right here where they come into contact with the torso. The skins are loaded thanks to the help of the Betacraft proxy servers. The classic server 1.4 is not the only server we can connect to in this version. The versions we can connect to are determined by the protocol version number. Any clients and servers with the same protocol number should be able to connect. Impressively, Minecraft uses the same protocol number system up to today, with version 1.18.2 having the number 758. But if we scroll all the way down this list, all the way down to classic, we'll get that our current protocol version number is actually 4. But this is not the only version with that same protocol version number. If we look, client 17a 18a underscore 02, both share 4, and servers 1.3, 1.4, and 1.4.1. That means any of the combinations of these connections are possible. Here is classic server 1.3 with client 17a. And 18a underscore 02. Now server 1.4 with client 17a. And client 18a underscore 02. And finally server 1.4.1 with client 17a. And 18a underscore 02. If I try connecting version 22a underscore 05 with a protocol number of 6 to the classic 1.4.1 server on the right, you see we get this wrong protocol version error message. 
that prevents us from joining. Interestingly though, if we scroll back up that protocol number list, you'll see the numbers increase for classic and alpha servers until we get to alpha server 0.1.4. Then it resets it back to one and it increases again so that alpha server 0.2.4 and alpha version 1.2.2 have the same protocol version number. So what if we try connecting these clients and servers? So we are now in alpha version 1.2.2 and let's see what happens when we try connecting to the, our server. You can see instantly it doesn't work. Still no good. Despite the same protocol number, these versions are still too different. Also later on the protocol numbers were reset a second time so that many 1.7 versions share that protocol number of 4. So now let's try joining a 1.7.2 with a protocol number of 4 as well. As you can see, still no luck. We instantly got an error message, although it's a different error message this time. However, these aren't special cases for versions with the same protocol number. Let's try joining in a version with a different protocol number. If we try joining a 1.7.10 with a protocol number of 5, we get the exact same exception. So these versions are so different that we don't even need a protocol number to get an error to stop the connection. As we just saw, the exception message depends on the version we tried to connect from. During Classic, we get the proper wrong protocol version exception message that prevents us from joining. Then from alpha version 1.0.15 to 12w16a, a 1.3 snapshot, we get the buffer underflow and null pointer exceptions. Then finally, from 12w17a to the present, we get this io exception bad command. And the command number also depends on what version we try to connect from. From 12w17a to 13w39b, a 1.7 snapshot, we get that the command number is equal to the protocol number of that version. That changes in 13w41a with the netty rewrite, and in that snapshot is equal to 16 always. But that changes in the very next snapshot to 15, and it remains that way all the way to 1.9.4. Then it changes back to 16 from 16w20a to 1.17.1. .1. And then finally, from 1.18 experimental snapshot 1 all the way to the present, it's always going to be 19. You also get error messages when you try getting the information for the server list. All right, the final thing for today's episode will be another animation using spawn resetting to consistently set our perspective. This will be a classic that we must do in our world as well, sorting algorithms. A lot of animations covering this have already been created, so I'll link some others I find cool in the description as well. In computer science, sorting algorithms order a list of comparable objects from least to greatest. There are many ways to accomplish this, but some are much faster than others. To animate the sorting algorithms, we've got these 10 scrambled plank pillars that we want ordered from shortest on the left to tallest on the right. Whenever the pillars are checked or swapped by the algorithms, they'll appear as logs, and pillars that the algorithm know are sorted will appear as leaves. There are actually hundreds of different sorting algorithms, but we'll only look at five of the most commonly taught ones. We're going to race them, so let me introduce you to our competitors. Up first, we've got selection sort. Go through the list, find the minimum, move it to the front section of the list, and repeat. Next, we've got bubble sort. Go through the list, comparing each pair of pillars, and swap them if they're out of order. Repeat until everything is ordered. In the other corner, we have insertion sort. Create a section of sorted pillars on the left, and insert the next pillar to the right at the correct spot in that section. Then we have merge sort. Keep splitting the list in halves until you get two elements, then switch them into order if needed, and continue the merge of the halves recursively through the list until you've merged the whole list. And last but not least, we've got quick sort. Choose a pivot to partition the pillars shorter and taller around. Do this for each half you created recursively, and merge them like merge sort. Ready, set, go! Ah, as we just saw, quick sort is a winner. Next was merge sort and then insertion sort. When we compare algorithm speeds, we look at big O notations. 
Big O tells us how much longer an algorithm takes as the number of inputs increases. The function inside of the Big O's parentheses will be an upper bound for the runtime when multiplied by some constant c. You can compare these algorithms by best case, worst case, and average case scenarios. If we look at the average case, we see that the selection, bubble, and insertion sort are big O of n squared, while merge and quick sort are big O of n log n, which is a lot quicker with larger values. Big O doesn't reveal all time efficiency though, only how fast it grows in the long run. But these comparisons are really helpful for sorting out these sorting algorithms. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. A lot of time goes into these videos, so if you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Bye.